Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my solo run on the Shattered Throne dungeon, which I'm sure most of you are aware is coming back next season. So I decided to make, kind of get ahead of the curve and release this that maybe will help you guys get through this. This is a solo flawless run, it's on console too. Now, the weapons I've used doing this, I did use a sword, which is getting a nerf next season, but I used a sword for everything up to the boss. Now, the strategy I used at the boss, still going to be strong next season. The sword's getting a 15% nerf, so probably still is going to do roughly what it's done here. If you want to use a legendary and put a taken spec on it or a major spec on it, that will increase the damage that you're doing by 8%. Uh, taking specs 10%. I'm not even sure the taken. I think the taken spec works everywhere. I'm unsure. So when you come into the, the Shadow Throne, you're going to be you're going to have this first area to traverse. So when you get so far down here, you're going to get a bunch of enemies that are going to spawn. One of them is going to be an architect. And that's the, the, other, guy, the other guys you're looking for. Now, this area, this starting area, let's let's call it by, by the symbols. This, this is diving bird. So for anybody that's done the Wall of Wishes, you'll understand these symbols. It's a bird that's kind of flying down with its wings out. So this is diving bird. This is where the whole thing is going to start. And once you've cleared the six, uh, the six architects, you can see there uh, is a big yellow bar taken. So once you've cleared them, that that is when you'll be able to move out of this area. Now there's eight of these big taken guys to kill, and what happens is every time you kill one, a glowing symbol will appear, and it will tell you which symbol you have to go to next. So basically, you've got this area which you're going to have to fight two here. One to start the whole thing, which is this guy here, and then one at the end to end it. So you see there, that is what you're looking for, a labyrinth architect. And there you go, we've got infinite, which is on the left-hand side. So once you clear an area, you're going to go up here, you can see this is diving bird, this is a symbol at the back. And you can go left and right from the same place. When you come out the door, you're going to get a wave of these, these uh, little kind of acolytes, little, little throw. Uh, you've got throw, the throw. They're not acolytes. Shut up. It's like I don't play this game. Uh, and and basically you're going to get the same sort of wave on each side. So this is I'm going to explain that you've got three of these architects on the left and three of them on the right. So on the left, which is where we are now, you're going to have infinite, which is top right. It's up that slope and then round to the right. Then you're going to have fire breathing dragon, which is in this this temple right here and then below us you're going to have what the, what people call uh 69 fish it's just two fish swimming around in a circle so uh 69 fish fire breathing dragon and infinite are all on this side on the other side you're going to have single single fish which will be as soon as you come out of the the right hand side of the center area uh round to the left you're going to have like a broken, it's like a broken pathway that, that's going up to a temple. That is single bird. And then underneath the, the temple, underneath that ascending bridge, underneath there, you will have W snake. Now, as I said, anybody's, anybody's ever done the Wall of Wishes, you will know exactly what those symbols are. Once you've cleared all the areas, then you will be given a prompt. The last area you clear, as I say, the six of these additional areas, six of these areas out with the first and the last one, so eight all in, but six out of the first place. Once you've completed, let's just say there's six you need to do, because you've got to complete one to get in and one to get out. So six of these. Once you complete the sixth one, you'll get a glowing symbol telling you to go to uh, Diving Bird. And then that's that's this this over with. Now, the main things you'll you'll compete with here is obviously out, out of these uh, labyrinth architects. The main thing you're going to be dealing with is thrall and snipers. Now, the snipers are nearly always you're always really going to have to deal with them, except for one that I can think of. They're all on the side. So you're, as you've seen, when I was going towards. Uh, infinite, which that was the symbol I just went to. As soon as I jumped onto the first platform, four snipers appeared. One across from me on top of the building where infinite is, one to the right, and two up to the rock to my left. You'll see here when we go through here, 
I'm going to get another wave of throw, and there are a couple of more snipers round to the left, kind of higher up. When you, so, so you've got this wave here, exactly the same kind of wave that you got when you came out the other side. But when you go up that broken pathway, which is just up to the left, round to the left of where we are now. When you go up, up that pathway, as soon as you get up top, you're going to have, uh, you're going to have another wave of this throw. You see those snipers there, there's two of them. Now, another, another thing is, there are a few ads that don't spawn until there's the second one. There's a, there's a few ads that don't spawn until you move past a certain area. So, as you see here, that this, this is W. Now, we're going to get a Taken Cabal. You see there? I was prepared for him. I'll just throw my Nova at... Now, I'm using Devour to start with. Uh, I will be changing my subclass a few times during this. Uh, and I will explain, but once once I've explained about the, the locate, there's another sniper. There are three more ads in the route we're going to take. There's three more, two more sets of ads, but there's like, I think it's five all in, but there's two more sets of ads that will just pop out on us. Uh, not including that wave of thrall that's up to the right here. And we're going over the other side because it's 69 fish, which is the two fish swimming around a circle. I've always found it quite weird that they call it 69 fish. I understand why they call it that, but it's a really weird... You can tell that it's... Well, I mean, I'm saying it, so it's, <laughs> I can't really say too much about people that say it. But uh, it's just ingrained in my head now that... It's, Fish swim around a circle. So anyway, you're gonna get th this. This is W Snake, but you're gonna get this taken captain. So hit him straight away. He doesn't become a problem. And there we go. We've got we've got uh just a, a taken a taken uh architect, but he's just a taken cabal with a shield. Just a taken phalanx with a shield. You've got you the, the ad you'll be facing is basically there's there's like a couple of cabal. We we seen the one at Infinite's arc shielded. This guy is just a, a phalanx. We've got two solar shielded captains. One of them we're going to now. That's fire breathing dragon, which is up to the. It's on the 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 left hand side, which is where we are now, and it's it's up top. So once we do this, we've done all of right side. So on the right, as I've said, you've got fire breathing dragon, infinite, which we've already done. Uh, fire breathing dragon, we're doing now, and. Uh, 16 fish which we've already done that means on the left what we've got to do on the left is single bird and single fish because we've done w snake now as i say with all those ads you've got uh fire breathing dragon as you've seen solar shielded captain once you've completed all the areas and you'll get you get the prompt to come back to dive and bird that will be out that will be a solar shielded captain infinite is an arc shielded cabal uh single Fish is is a taken uh, Vandal Sniper. Uh, where we're going to now, Single Bird, uh, for some reason I never jumped. Single Bird is a Hobgoblin Sniper. And W Snake is an uh, Invisible Minotaur. This is the last set of kind of singular ads that, that spawn. These guys here, when you, when you get close to this upward upward uh, kind of pathway these guys will spawn there'll be two down at the bottom and two up top now what i was finding when i was doing the runs is they were all spawning down the bottom where we've just came from and then two would teleport up here and then as i say the hobgoblin taking hobgoblins up here now in this first area i'm using devour you can see i'm just about to eat, eat my grenade and charge the lament and there we go. Now that, that is basically how I've attacked this whole first area, is Devour and the Lament. When we get past this first area, I'm going to change subclass. Now the weapons I'm using, I'm using uh, a bow. I use a bow with them for a lot of this, right up until the boss I use a bow. Because no damage fall off whatsoever, and... They're very accurate. I'm also using a sniper for the for the bigger ads, a single fish. So that will be the, the taken vandal down here, and that you can see them there. And that will be the last of the ads. Uh, so I'm I'm gonna be using the the arsenic bite. Well that's what I'm using at the moment, is the arsenic bite. And 
I'm using uh, Bite the Fox Primary Sniper, which I will change at some point. I will go a primary uh, bow, which I'm going to use the I forget what it's called actually off the top of my head. It's the it's the Europa one. I'm going to use that because I've got explosive rounds on it, and I will switch to a fusion rifle, and then at the boss. I'll go back to using uh, roughly the same loadout we're using here, except I won't be using a sword. Which is why I never re-ran this when they said swords were getting nerfed. Everything I've done with a sword, uh, if you've done it with a legendary with, with a powerful mod on, uh, you see there we've got diving birds, so that's us going to the centre, which is going to be a solar captain. Same as The exact same solar captain as we fought uh, at Fire Breathing Dragon. Yeah, so the reason I never re-ran this is because I figured everything I've done with a sword after the nerf, you can still do. You know, everything was killed well within the time. You could put an extra 15% on worth, worth of damage in the time that I have uh, with the Lament, or if you use the Legendary, put a mod on, you'll do more damage anyway. You just won't get won't get the, the big hit. So you can see here, I've changed... I'm changing now to top tree dawn blade, and I'm gonna change. I'm not gonna change my weapons. I'll do that when I get to uh, Vorgoth. But when we get to Vorgoth, I'll change to a uh, primary bow and a fusion rifle, a void fusion rifle, which is the I'm using the Cairo class. Does it uh, the 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 void fusion rifle we got in the seasonal event, the dawning? So I'm gonna be changing to that, but I'm gonna be keeping the sword on. So we're starting with primary sniper, uh, energy bow, and a sword. And I've got sword ammo finder, sword scavenger, all, all the stuff associated with those weapons. And uh, whatever, I, I, I like to kind of go with what, what the damage is that I'm going to be facing the most. So here I felt like uh, solar would be strong, arc would be strong. So I, I kind of I kinda went with an... I, th I think on this I've got arc damage resist, and basically what that means is I've got an arc affinity chest plate on. You can't you can't put uh, an arc affinity you can't put an arc damage buff on if you've not got an arc chest plate on. When you get to the boss, you might want to put void. It's up to you. You can put anything you want. It's whatever you feel comfortable with, or you think it's going to work for you. I went with, I think I might have went with Ark at the boss. So anyway, we're in this next area, there's kind of a heap of snipers perched, some uh, taken acolytes. I'm saying taken, everything up to the boss is taken. Uh, you've got acolytes, you've got some sniper vandals, you've got a couple of, uh, or you've got one uh, in this area uh, at the top of the stairs, you've got a, a phalanx. As you've seen, there was an invisible minotaur and, and some ads, which I took from up top. I kind of make it up to this staircase, and then just hit this guy. You'll always, you can always kind of sneak hit him. And then I'm going to put a rift down because you're going to be some vandals that are going to come looking for you. And one of them, as you just seen there, he popped. There he is. One of them was very lucky there because he, uh, he, uh, he fell. But you'll there's two invisible minotaurs. You see one of them coming to me now. I'm letting them come because they. You know, two, two hits, they're, they're gone. You've also got, in this area, which you need to kill him to progress, you've got another solar shielded captain. So he is up here. See him jump down? So I'm going to jump up here. And again, I've got, I've, I've got him in my sights. I'm just using... I use my sword a lot to... Uh, I use my sword a lot to... Uh, manoeuvre away from shots. Just a quick way to manoeuvre. Now, as again, I've got because because the sni because I've got a sniper on. I've got sniper ammo finder, uh, scavenger, all the good stuff. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take uh, all these ads left and right. Now, the the sniper's really good if you've got a ton of super. If you've got a ton of special about, uh, then just use your special and just pop them. Uh, it's, it's it's always been a little game I've played here. Trying trying headshot from from range. I've always played that game with myself with the bow. So I like to take these kind of elites out as as quickly as possible. 
And I always do it from the top of the stairs each side because I, it's it's a much safer proposition. And, and I'm just going to... I'm not... I've seen people do it. I've seen people skip past this section. This isn't a speed run, and it's not by a speed runner. Uh, th this is a repeatable way, whereas if you do it exactly like I've done it in this video, you will you'll do it exactly the same way every time. This isn't a you need this to get it to work, or you know, it's 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 a repeatable strategy, and I'll tell you exactly how I know that. This was the second time I'd done this in a row. I finished it, and then just went straight back in. And actually, the second time I'd done this, I was roughly 11 minutes faster with this run than I was. I hadn't done the Shattered Throne in a long, long time. So I had to re-familiarise myself with uh, the areas. A lot of it, I actually a lot of it, I wouldn't say forgot, but I was like, oh, I forgot about this part. It's not really forgot, I just needed refreshed. So I'm just going to go up and get some ammo. The idea of changing the subclass is we're going to skip the ogre section. Uh, as I, I know I've just said, well, we're not, I've seen people skip this part. Again, it's it's not a, oh, you know, it's tricky. It's not. It's, it's really easy to skip. And it just saves you a bit of time. There's no, no need to fight the ogres if you don't have to. The less you've got to do, the easier the, the, easier the flawless becomes. So we're just going to get behind here. I couldn't get a bead on him before here. Three shots. I'm just going to change now to the fusion rifle and the primary bow, right? And that's so I can get some special before we get to the ogre section. Because the bow will do everything I need it to do. The bow will do everything that I need. Uh, I don't really need the sniper now. Now, I'll probably do it before we get... Yep, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to change, because you can see there, I've got, I had Lucent Blade on as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change to a Fusion Rifle Finder. And a Fusion Rifle Scavenger. And that what that, what that does... I, I shouldn't really have to explain this, but I will. What that does is it increases the chance greatly. And what I've noticed is increases like... It's kind of me being nice about it. I have noticed that you really don't drop a lot of ammo unless you've got the finder on. And the scavenger just means when you do find it, you will, you'll get more for your money. So instead of getting two rounds, one round sometimes even, you'll get anything up to ten with the scavenger on. You can double up on those if you, if you so desire, but I, I didn't see the need. The f what, so so now that now that we've got here, there's still a few more enemies, but you can see I'm almost I'm almost full on on uh, fusion rifle, which you know is exactly why I am full on fusion rifle now, which is exactly why I changed to make sure I was full. Just looking because I thought I seen heavy ammo drop there. Well, no heavy here, uh, no no problem to us. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to this first part and then I'm going to consume my grenade. Now that gives me 15 seconds of massive boost. See here, I think it's, I'm pretty sure it's 15, so 8, or 10 seconds, sorry, 10 seconds? I thought it was more than that. 10 seconds, and then once we, we're going to boost to this spot here, and then pop the super when we land, jump, and just keep spamming. Whatever the button is for you, so, so uh, Xbox is B, PlayStation is Circle, and whatever your bind is for that button uh, on PC. And that just gets you straight past here. And I'm going to keep this on. I'm going to keep Top Tree Dawn Blade on until we beat this next part. Now I'm going to keep my sword out because you get slowed in here. Can't bush jump. But you can see I've got, I think I've got six or seven mobility. So see how I'm bouncing. Because you, you, you'll know if you've got good mobility. But I've got the sword and I can couple it with uh, Icarus Dash. So, if I do get in trouble, Icarus Dash re, re kind of uh, refreshes itself every couple of seconds. So, I've used one there. I've used another one. You see, I've, I've still got one to use, although I used them with a second or two. If I had used both of them together, I'd have had to wait. You just use one at a time and use your sword as well. You can just, you see there, cooldown, five second cooldown. And the sword, 
The reason why I use the Icarus Dash more than the sword, really, is because the sword locks on. So all the, the, the there's some of them normally there, and you can see I got some heavy drop. And they will despawn. And there we go. I got all the heavy I needed. Now I'm going to change to um, Middle Tree. Now we want the whale for uh, Vorgoth. Just collecting anything, anything because the greed is strong in this guardian. So if I see any glimmer, it's mine. It's, that, that's it. And uh, even if it dropped out of your pocket, it's mine. So now we're at Vorgoth. Now I did investigate a, a way to maybe skip Vorgoth, but you can still get out of the map very easily. Uh, it just won't spawn the checkpoint regardless of what you do. So unfortunately, the ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to do Vorgoth, which. And not really too much of a problem. Uh, we will be one phasing them. And for anybody, a lot of people might see us and be like, is this still going to work next season? Well, if you think about the power level I am here, which is, you know, as, as a reasonable power level, we're going to be higher than that next season. So, yes, this will, this, this, this will work next season as well. So, I'm just going to... I could just run past these, but... When I've got a bow in my hand, it just seems like a waste. So, just take out these enemies, see what, you never know, maybe, I don't think I need any ammo, but as I say, as I said to start with, it's kind of a game I play with myself when I come in here, is to see how many, from what range I can get crits from, and it's target practice if, it, if nothing else. And there we go, that's them all dead. Bit heavy, I'm not sure I need it, nope, I didn't need it. Some uh, motes of light, which I'm probably not going to need. And here we are at Vorgoth. Now, Vorgoth... Vorgoth is very simple. It's it's basically a round-robin system. You, you Every time you kill, you get four wizards that spawn in. And then on one, one at each side, uh, you'll see here, they've got these four kind of lights, uh, v vases. It's, they're, they're actually slam points. And you'll get a wizard, you'll, get a, you'll have Vorgoth in the centre. And then you're going to get a wizard each side of it. And with the wizard, you'll get two goblins and two snipers. What I do, you see I've put a rift down straight away. I take out the adds on my side. Uh, which is the two goblins and the two snipers. And then I try and take... I think it's one sniper left up there he is. I try and take the adds to the left. And see if I can take some adds out on the right hand side. Every time you break this wizard's seat shield, she will just about turn and run away. So if you feel like you're getting hit by a wizard, break break her shield and you should be good. Now, what I will say is be careful because now we with this fusion rifle, we are break we are doing a lot of damage here. So where I went to start with is my first kind of safe point here. And where I am now is my second. When I say safe point, I don't mean you can't get hit, as you've seen there. You can get hit. But where, when one location isn't safe, the other one will be. You, it's very rare you can get hit in both locations. So up against this side bit here, I, I, can, I can stay safe. Uh, I, I wasn't there because I, I was peeking. But you can stay safe here, and if it's not safe there, you can come over here. Um, I'm taking chances that I shouldn't take. But, as you can see, and I, I've been in here before. This isn't my first rodeo, as they say. I don't know if any remembers that. I remember that saying, obviously, but I remember it because it's a Gears of War Triumph. <laughs> so, I can't see any ads over on the right, and I know I've took the ads out on, on the left. It's just a wizard on each side. So, I will take out this wizard, and every time you take a wizard out, you're going to pick up an orb. You're going to get an orb. I'm just having a look here. And as you can see, I've got Petitioner's Mark. I need to get that to times four. Now, if you die, if even if you're... Obviously, if you die in your solo, then you've died. That's it. But if you're in a fire team and you die, ev everybody gets this buff. But if you die, everybody loses it. So just be wary. If you are doing this as part of a fire team, just be wary when you're doing this. Now, you've got... Only a limited time to pick this this petitioner's mark up, but I, I kind of milked it there because 
as you've seen it refresh the timer, I didn't need to just run and pick it up straight away. I took out some of these ads first. And then I just come over here, take this wizard. If if you're getting hit like that, best thing to do is just do it do a run and slide. We've got petitioners mark three. And when we kill this last wizard, so each each wizard drops a void orb, you pick it up and you get another another times something, times two or times three, up until you get times three, and when you pick the next one up, you get Petitioner's Burden. Now, what we're going to do with Petitioner's Burden, we're going to slam it in one of these positions, and then we're going to attack the boss and get over here well. Now, you see I got blasted away straight away, but it doesn't matter. Now, we're just going to smash him. Now, you'll see here, if you were using a legendary sword like Fallen Guillotine, See how much time I've wasted, not just getting smashed out of here, but also trying to charge the sword, because I was using the Lament. If you were using the Fallen Guillotine, I am almost positive that that would do the same job that what that's done. In the same time, even when it gets the 15%, because I didn't have a boss spec or anything on there. So, there we go. That's that's how you do Vorgoth. So, you need a void. I used I used a high impact void weapon. Obviously, that uh, is it the pyro class, the fusion rifle, and that basically two hits. You can use whatever if you're using a legendary sword. You could use Telesto if you want to use a sniper. If you want to use a shotgun, but better off with void. And I would say something that can do a mid range damage because you're not going to be doing it from too far away, and you don't want to kill uh, wizards when you can't go and pick the orb up. But as a matter of uh, additional information, if you do kill a wizard and can't pick the orb up, when you kill that last wizard, so you start at the, if you see where you start is the front, and then you go front, left, back, right, another wizard will spawn at the front. So if you do mess up, you can come back round to the front and just kill the adds there, because they, every there will always be another set of wizards spawning up, which is why I always like to position myself, if, if, if you're doing a two-phase, I always like to position myself on one of the back two slams, left or right. If you think you're going to two-phase, right, do the right-hand side so that you can come straight the way I'm coming here and right back to the spawn, right back to your spot before he puts his shield up. It's an easy two-phase as well, you just rinse and repeat, but one phase number is very, very easy. But uh, So that's how you do Vorgoth. Vorgoth, very simple. And as you can see, we've switched. I am now running uh, a primary sniper. Or back to back to the primary, back to the back to the the energy bow. And I also have a linear fusion rifle. Now the linear fusion rifle that I'm using is the one from Season of the Hunt. It's from the. It's one of the seasonal weapons. It's the linear. Is it, it's not Royal Chase. I can't remember. It's. I, I'm always really bad at remembering weapons names. It, it will come back to me. Uh, Royal Chase was the scout rifle, right? But it's the the linear fusion rifle from Season of the Hunt. It's a solar. I have. I remember the perks I've got on it. I have high impact reserves. So the last two rounds, I think it's got. Five in the mag, five or six in the mag, and the last two rounds do like 10% more damage. So you couple that with the mechanics of the boss, you're going to kill with. Uh, you, you, I was very surprised at how much damage this linear fusion rifle done. You see here, I'm, I'm making sure I've got all my linear fusion rifle uh, mods on. One of the most important is. Obviously, you need linear uh, reserves, scavenger, but I've also got linear reloader. Now, I'm just just a personal gripe here, guys. You guys know I do a lot of nightfall, solo nightfalls, and do stuff like that. It still annoys me a little bit, and I'm probably being a little bit harsh, but it still annoys me that uh, they chose to put that I can't put a reload mod on. Or, or, or a fastball, which I can understand because everybody was using fastball, but can't put a loader if, if, if I'm using two weapons uh, in a nightfall. I, why did they put both the, both the mods that we need for nightfalls 
on the same piece of armor. Probably being a little bit harsh on them there, because it is a good idea that they're on armor in the first place. It means then we can use exotics. Uh, anyway, so we are using this linear fusion rifle. It performed really well. And uh, now we're just going to make way at the boss. We're going to do one more skip. And also, just for the record, I have changed to top tree Nova. Controverse holds for the grenade. Uh, my It's worthwhile noting that my bow has explosive rounds and dragonfly, which are very important here. So, we will... These captains that we have to deal with are solar. Hence, the it's a good idea that the linear fusion rifle is solar. Because at least I have a solar weapon. Come out to play. No. Nope. How bad is it that I couldn't happen with the bow, but I could happen with the, the the fusion rifle? The reason why I used so many shots is because I knew I had this brick of heavy behind us. And again, just make your way forward, kill what's in front of you. These these, these this next area here is you've got two captains, let one left, one right, and then you've got some taken vandals. So I'm just gonna Burn some heavy here, and you can see I had a brick behind me. I don't really when I'm when I'm doing stuff like this, and I need to conserve ammo. I don't really, uh, I don't really use that ammo unless I see stuff drop. So I I tend not to use heavy unless I know I've got heavy to pick up. But, you know, I I don't really like put myself in a position where I'm like, oh man. Even though there are farm spots here, I don't like putting myself in a position where I feel like now I have to farm ammunition. It just, it doesn't make for an, an, an interesting time for me. It doesn't make for good content either, I don't think. Watching somebody stand and farm ammo for a while. Uh, and I certainly didn't want to do that in this. So I think I, I think I ended up having to. But, you know, no. so I, I understand that it happens. But... I, I I I personally thought, oh man, that's not not such a good idea. So, be, because I've got quite a bit of special and quite a bit heavy, I don't really. I know I had to use. Uh, nice, got his shield back. Lovely. Uh, I I knew I had to use some solar. Obviously, because there are solar shielded captains, but we we want to try not to. But the, I mean, if you do, as as I've said, I did have to farm a, a little bit of ammo, but I try not to use too much. So here we are. We're at the the the, the stairs with the shadow throw. So we're going to skip this. The, the to the right here, there's that wall of take the blue wall. We're going to skip that by. There's a little feature here. We're going to jump on this feature, and once you land on it, we're going to jump onto this circle now if you just about hit it you will mantle it anyway and as you can see it's a very very simple jump from there over here you've skipped that whole taken wall of blooping which can be a pain in the backside and now there's going to be some shadow throw here we're just going to farm a little bit heavy just make sure we go into this with full heavy so i am i will recap what i'm using at the boss because the bot i think the boss is the most important part here so uh i'm using a primary primary sniper, the the bait of the fox. I am using uh, the the bow that I'm using at the moment. As uh, you see, there I've got heavy bow. I'm using is the arsenic bait. I have explosive rounds, and I have dragonfly on it, which is very important. You'll see that come into play. My sniper also has dragonfly on it. I am using the. The linear fusion rifle that I completely forget the name of, but it's from the season, this season's uh, season pass. It's the seasonal weapon, the linear fusion rifle. We are top tree Nova. I have controverse holds on. I've got uh, linear fusion reloader, which is really important as well for putting as much DPS on. My linear fusion rifle has high impact reserves. You see it there on the bottom left. I cannot remember what it's called. Uh... I'm using a, a charge bullet build, so picking up orbs will get us, make us charge bullet, which will also increase the damage that we do. So the plan is, we're going to throw a grenade to the left, and take out the adds on the left. We're going to hit the adds on the right with a, a bow, one or two bow shots, and try and get the explosive damage, the dragonfly damage, which should take them all out. Then we're going to fire one over at the knights, aim in between the middle knight and the right hand knight so that we both take maximum impact. Then we're going to move from that position 
over to the left hand side and snipe the knights till they're dead. So you see here, it used to work if you ran down the stairs, it shows you how long it's been since I've done it. It doesn't work anymore if you run down the stairs. You do not get them to turn, so I just put a shot on each of them, charge my grenade over to the right, and then crit shot, which explodes and kills them all. Nova in between the right and the left, and while they are recovering from that, I reload my sniper and jump over to the left hand side. Now the plan is, we want to get them headless, as fast as possible. You see there, one, there's one gone, there's another already headless. Just before he goes, get, get him down. You see they drop those orbs. Those orbs give you a buff called Final Thought and you do massive damage. But you do have a time limit on it, you see? You pick up all three orbs, you've got 40 second time limit, I've got times three. I am charged with light so we're all good. Put my rift my, my riff down and we're just going to smash her. This will kill her. See how much damage we do and then when we get to those final couple we're doing a lot more damage because of that high impact reserves. If you don't think you can one, one phase the boss, let that final thought go down to about 10 seconds and then jump on this kind of void table. It will take the buff off you, meaning it won't kill you. A crystal will appear behind Dalakaru. Shoot the crystal. The knights will come back. The ads will come back, rinse and repeat. And that's it, guys. But doing it this way, you should get the one phase. And I hope this has helped you. I hope you guys have enjoyed the run. I have enjoyed doing this. I will do another run next season, maybe with rockets or something. But this run will work next season as well. Thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate all the support I get. And as always, guys, take it easy. And I'll see you in the next video.